In a previous lecture, I talked about the architecture of web applications. In this lecture, I want to discuss the architecture used within Ruby on Rails applications and how that fits into the overall N-tiered architecture framework. So this is um, CSC 3100 Web Programming Spring 2017. <clears throat> so here's the picture that I had drawn um, I showed you in the in one of the previous lectures. And, and essentially what it shows here that at the bottom we've got a database uh, in the middle is just sort of the, actually the whole thing is sort of the, uh, the web tier. Uh, and, and there is another component that isn't shown here, which would be essentially the client of our applications. Um, but the thing that I wanted to point out here is that uh, we have a, a layer of, of components that uh, are used or are used to depict this particular stack of of um, components for the for Ruby on Rails applications, uh, and what we're really interested in is kind of breaking this down, or what I'm interested in doing is breaking this down into uh, another perspective of how applications are are formed. Uh, in particular, there is a framework called model view controller. It's a pattern um, sometimes referred to as MVC. And, and the idea here is that applications are, are broken down into uh, the models or, or the data that, um, uh, that we have uh, concerning objects, if you will, um, within, the, uh, within the application. Uh, we have the view, so this is the way that we, we see or that that data or some aspect or a transformation of that data is presented to us. And then we have a controller, uh, which is uh, the way that we as users interact with the system. So the way that the MVC pattern works, and, and actually one of the things to notice here is uh, is how this picture in a way uh, represents the the n-tiered architecture, the n-tier um, uh, or three-tier architecture that I'd shown you before. So here is the client view. Um, the things here in the middle would be say a server and then of course we have a database. So in the MVC pattern uh, the way that it works is that uh, a browser through interaction with the user um, sends a request um, that request is received by the controller. The controller sort of does this intermediation um, between the system and the user um, to, uh, uh, to interact with, uh, with the model. Um, the model, of course, having the, the access to the database so that, uh, that we can retrieve information that we need, manipulate in whatever way we need to. Um, but then handles uh, control back to the controller. Uh, which then uses the information from the model uh, to render a view. That review, or sorry, that view is then presented to the user through the browser. Uh, so uh, within Ruby on Rails, the way that this is implemented, and what we'll be using um, this semester, the way that this is implemented is through uh, through this sequence of steps, uh, which. Again, follows exactly the, the MVC um, pattern. So uh, a user through you know, interaction th um, with the browser um, clicks on a link, for instance. And so it could be my.url, line items, whatever that may be. Uh, what happens there is that uh, within uh, Ruby on Rails, there's a router. Uh, and we'll see this in the applications that we create, that there's uh, a route table that, uh, that we define. Uh, that is then passed on to controllers that, uh, uh, that interact with the model. Um, the model uh, is what's used to access the database to, to provide us with the information that we need to manipulate, to transform, whatever that may be. Uh, control is given back to the controller so that then the view can be rendered. Uh, that view is then um, sent back uh, as something that the browser is able to then display to the user. 
So again, uh, within um, Ruby on Rails, the, the MVC is the primary uh, framework, and you'll see this actually in the applications that we create as we go through and create our first application. You'll see this uh, in what we've created uh, or what we will create uh, and what you will create. You'll see um, th this separation of concerns. You'll see where the where the model is being uh, being manipulated. You'll find uh, the different views that we need to uh, 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 make modification to so that we can display information to, uh, in the browser. You'll see the controller and how that's working as far as separating out the concerns of different aspects of the data. Um, so, uh, and, and especially in separating out how uh, how the uh, the system is to react to certain types of of actions. So, in the um, uh, in Ruby on Rails, um, support for models happen through the use of something that um, we call object relational mapping. And I know that some of you may not have much of a database background, but the, uh, the primary way that we, um, uh, that we interact with, uh, with the database in uh, Ruby on Rails is through classes, uh, the objects of those classes and the attributes. And those end up translating to being uh, tables if we're talking about classes. Um, if I have a row of, uh, of items within a table, a row could be considered an object and the columns in those, uh, in those tables refer to the different attributes of those, of those objects. In uh, Ruby on Rails, Active Record is the uh, is the ORM layer, um, and, and so you'll see Active Record um, mentioned several times in any of the books that are out there, um, and that essentially is just the, the the implementation of ORM within Rails. There are several different databases that are supported. Um, SQLite, I think, is is sort of the default. Um, but uh, there are several uh, applications out there that use MySQL. We're going to be kicking around uh, Postgres this semester. Um, but there's certainly a, a number of different uh, of uh, different interfaces that are out there um, that can be used to connect with uh, different types of databases. Finally, uh, the support for views and controllers uh, within Ruby on Rails happens through a component called Action Pack. And this is what's used to, to bundle the different views and controllers. Uh, essentially, um, as you'll see in the structure of the applications that we create, um, you'll see these in two forms. Uh, for the views, um, we'll be creating um, embedded Ruby within HTML. Um, and, and so we'll be specifying sort of a mixture of HTML and JavaScript. Uh, we'll be using Bootstrap within all of that as well. And then on the other side, um, the controllers, um, essentially this is our, our Ruby code. You'll actually find, and we'll actually find that uh, the framework does a lot for us um, as far as handling um, specific details, especially when it comes to um, how we interact with databases and whatnot. Um, so, uh, you know, as far as this interaction and the moderation between uh, views and, and models, the controller framework within Ruby on Rails is, is actually quite robust. So anyway, um, basic, uh, again, the basic idea of how uh, applications are, um, are structured within Ruby on Rails, um, I think really comes here. This is the, the model view controller. Uh, uh, and I think having a, a good sense of how model view controller works in this context for web actually helps with your understanding of how model view controller works in mobile applications. So you'll see this in the way that, uh, that Android and iOS applications are structured. Um, and especially as you start looking at uh, applications that are, that are GUI based, um, the model view controller pattern really is um, one of these foundational concepts for, uh, for modern programming. So, Anyway, that concludes this lecture.